Let's have a brief overview of how you can configure your personal discussion settings so that the online discussion system makes more sense. We're going to start by clicking the communications drop down menu on your home page and then clicking discussions. What this will do is open a panel where you can choose your settings. And then I'm going to ask you to make sure that your settings are basically set up along these lines. We want to be sure that you have threaded view selected. This allows you to see the discussions in a threaded organic format so you can see who's posting, who's responding, and what they're talking about. It's a very natural way to read a discussion thread. If you don't have it in threaded view, it becomes very difficult to stay on top of where the discussion is. It becomes quite confusing, so be sure you mark it for threaded view. Also, on your reply settings, which is way down here at the bottom, make sure that you have not clicked reply settings. What that does is automatically copy the reply of the person into your response, and that makes for a very cluttered and difficult way to, to read a post. Better to just carefully select a few items from the person's post if you wanted to respond to their verbiage directly. When you've done this, if you save, and if your um, uh, settings look like ours, a grid style, about 50 characters of li uh, limited in the subject area, which means that the subject matter um, topic is limited to 50 characters, this is going to work real well for you. And so I suggest that everybody starts off on the same foot by following these directions. Now, this printed guide can be found in the links section of our course under configuring your discussion settings. But I wanted to create a little video to really emphasize what you should do and how it should work. Now let's see what this looks like on the screen itself when we look at a discussion setting and how a discussion is created. Okay, here we are in the collaborative brain forum of one of my earlier classes and I'm going to just scan down the page so you can see what a threaded discussion should look like. You notice how things thread from a topic to the responses. Now this person has changed the title of the topic in the subject matter area and continued it. That's a nice habit to get into because it makes it easier to follow the thinking. The threads are basically the primary post and follow-up posts. And when those posts are made, you can tell just from looking at them that this is the primary post and then because this is indented it's the follow-up post so forth and so on and we can also see that in this primary post peer review the follow-up answer starts with not sure what you're asking so that the subject line really does help some people understand what the discussion is without even digging into it so that's what a typical uh, threaded discussion should look like now, let's take a look at a few more hints. It's possible to unthread a discussion. If you click unthread all messages and apply it, you end up getting a straight listing down the page. And it's pretty hard to tell, especially in these, which is the primary and which is the response, hence the desire to keep you in threaded mode most of the time. It's my suggestion that you stay in threaded mode. However, sometimes it is useful to be able to unthread things. You can also mark items as read or mark them as unread. So if you, you've read it and you want to be sure you come back to it and you mark it as unread, it's going to come up on the page as an unread document. If you mark it as read, it's read. And these are just some of the basics ways you can to manipulate the online uh, discussion system. I hope this helps. I hope it makes everything a little bit more clearer as we proceed in our time together online.